Um, all right, thanks for joining us. I'm gonna turn it right over to Adam, who is here to talk with us about his exercise called Day-to-Day -day Democracy. That's right, well, thanks for coming, and thanks for anybody who shows up in the digital realm. It's all the same to me in many ways. So, um, <clears throat> I wanna talk about this idea that I came up with. I'm gonna um, give you guys a little bit of a background um, on, on kind of my outlook on um, pedagogy. And, um, and then a little bit of the background of the idea, and then just sort of some examples of how it's worked out. And um, it's all very emergent, which is kind of the point. Um, but, and so uh, certainly I'm uh, here to hear what y'all think about it, um, uh, ways to improve it, and you know, also I'm happy to give anyone advice on um, how to do it, or when to do it, um, things like that. But it's always, you know, my ideas are always take it or leave it, <laughs> you know. So um, I want to start by just giving a little background into my outlook on this and then why I taught this course uh, the first time and the second time because it, I think it will kind of help position where I came up with this idea. So um, I really see, uh, I have some long academic -y quotes here, but it's important to me. Um, I feel like that our role um, as, in, as educators in today's world is a lot different um, than perhaps it's been in the past 50 years, let's say. Um, uh, a lot of where I get my philosophy is from, um, I mean, I guess I would say it's rooted in, in Paulo Freire, um, but uh, these are some quotes that I grabbed from a book that I read called Utopian Pedagogies, which is about kind of how to sort of co-opt education um, as a way to, to lead to greater democracy, right? Um, um, I think the important thing to note here, I've, I've kind of um, pictured and read, is that um, education can be a way to appropriate and direct and control the power that we are sort of <coughs> already given by being put in front of a classroom um, and put in, you know, with particular ages of students and particular crowds. Um, when um, much of our history of, of pedagogy has has been to create ideologies, um, to create <coughs> identities, and create values. And that's not necessarily in itself a bad thing. Um, it's more just that we have to be conscious of that. Um, uh, the second quote um, is that uh, I learned pretty early on, um, because my background is, I mean, I'm a geographer, and I'm a social scientist. I decided very early in my own teaching that you know, being apolitical was kind of ridiculous in geography because um, it's just a political act, any social science, um, I mean, and really any education. If I was teaching physics, okay, perhaps it's a little bit less political than teaching, you know, tourism development, but tourism development is by all means a political act, um, and um, I kind of come at it from a critical theory perspective. So, um, so we can't eliminate politics, but we have to sort of have uh, work against this politics of certainty. I really like that. I feel like that that idea goes uh, well in line with this idea. <coughs> um, and certainty in this sense of opening up things that are new. Um, and opening up things, um, uh, or rejecting certainty, so that we're opening up things that are not only just representative of various people and the diversity of opinions, but also the, the kind of instantaneousness that comes out of a classroom, um, the way that um, every day is different, right? Not just all the people are different, but mm -hmm. every day is different, every situation is different. The students feel one way, I feel one way, right? Um, and so I kind of wanted to um, break down this, um, uh, in a lot of ways, the stuff that I had done in the past. Um, I'll show you some examples of what I mean by that. Um, okay. Now. This is one of my favorite guys. If you know who he is already, I'll be very surprised. But <laughs> so just about my section, right? Um, I first, uh, I was in the first year seminar fellows, um, the first time that it was offered. And my idea for the first one was, uh, the question was more about finding paradise, um, but the idea was to talk about utopian thinking. Um, and I, I've always wanted to teach about utopian thinking because when I was, uh, in one of the first courses I taught, I had a student, uh, I said something about, oh, you know, theory can be just sort of a waste of time, it's too big, and he said, no way, theory and, you know, 
critical thinking is it is um, practical in itself, right? That you can't solve problems without thinking about them first. And I was like, good, because that's what I'm always doing. I'm good at figuring out problems and thinking through them, but I'm not as good at coming up with solutions. And so I want my students to be the ones who kind of are uh, use the ideas more practically, right? So, but the problem is, is that students are commonly afraid to think about big things, um, or they are easy to assume that some problems are just too big to solve or difficult to deal with. So, um, that was the idea behind the first one. Um, I, of course, I re-volunteered to teach the, the seminar again, or the Wicked Problem again, because I just really like it. I mean, a, a lot of it was a little bit personal in the fact that I get a little bit tired of talking about tourism all the time, um, and I wanted to talk, I mean, I talk about geography all the time, but I really, you know, see my own personal interest as just social theory, and I wanted to talk about something that was a little bit bigger in a lot of ways, and this course offered, in some ways, a lot of freedom. Um, however, it also has some structure to it that I was um, struggled with, let's just say. So, in my, in my Wicked Problem this semester, the title is Inequality. But really, the utopian thinking is, is sort of the subtext to all of it. And I think, it, you know, whether it's consciously chosen or not by the, um, by the, the educator, right, it's, uh, the, I, the whole idea behind tackling a wicked problem is trying to think of big ideas and make the world a better place. Um, so I kind of run head on into utopian thinking and rather than thinking of it as worthless or a waste of time, which you can find a lot out there that says it is a waste of time. Um, okay. Now, personally, I really love discussing teaching. One of the first things I realized after a year or two of you know, being a professor was that nobody ever saw my classes, any of my colleagues. I never saw any of their classes. We talked about it at lunch, but very little interaction. I've always felt that I was uncomfortable. So I tend to try to like force that a lot. Like, oh, what do you do? Tell me your assignments. And even now I'm taking, you know, I'm taking French, I'm taking classes because I wanna learn. I always said if I did a, a sabbatical, that's all I'd do is just take other people's classes. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to hear as much as I can from others, but I also really hate being told what to do. Um, <laughs> and you know that works well for being a college professor to some extent. This is actually though not as much like my choice as much as that when I started, um, you know, when I first was in front of a classroom at PSU, I mean at FSU. In Tallahassee, we actually had like five faculty members in, in our my geography department that left the first year I was there. And so grad students had a huge teaching responsibility, which is really great in the long run. But basically, I was told, here's when the class meets, here's the <laughs> title, right? And that was, I had absolutely no education on teaching at all, right? And so I, I've only done, I mean, I feel like I've done all right but it's only just been like, here's what I'm trying to figure out, right? I'll just work as I go, sink or swim. Um, and that's actually something that I've tried to teach in my, in both the times I've taught this course, is that it's not, con you know, is that, that people who are um, university professors, particularly if you're a PhD in non-education, have hardly any or very little training in education at all, right? They kind of assume that we are that we have learned how to teach, and <laughs> commonly that's not the case at all. In fact, we're taught to research whether, even though we know, you know, even though our advisors know that most of us won't be researchers, right? Mm -hmm. But that's just the way it is, right? So a lot of a lot of what I try to do in kind of the basic what I call intro to college lectures is just try to position the faculty, the administration, and, and let the students know like what they're dealing with, right? So. So um, the force, the, the structure that comes with you know my agreement to teach this class is something that I've always been like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> but at the same time I don't you know it's it's all well thought out and useful um, and I know for sure that lots of the people who sign up who get these trainings over the summer and stuff they really really appreciate it they've never taught at all they need guidance they want to discuss it with everybody else who's taught more and so I totally understand it but it's always something that I struggle with. Um, okay, I also really um, don't like being practical um, because I, it's just the way that I think, the way that I write is way more about critical theory than like, here's exactly what you should do to solve this problem. But of course, I have to be practical. I don't want the students to get information or skill. I want them to get some skills and not just random information from dead 
um, white dudes, but <clears throat> but I spend a lot of time doing that too. So um, this is another sort of one of my struggles, and I'm kind of you know giving you all of this information just to s see where I come from. I also really don't like the idea of um, education being a commodity. Um, honestly, if it was up to me, it would all be free, and um, I would do it for free if it was. Um, um, you know, I'm waiting on that inheritance to come in someday <laughs> if I ever got such a thing. <laughs> Um, I, um, I don't like the idea of the degree as a product at all. Um, I, I think of it as an experience, not a product. And I really dislike the corporization of, of academia. And um, in general, the um, move to see people, students, as consumers, um, that gets under my skin too. So some of my desire to sort of shake things up is, is born out of my kind of rejection of this neoliberalization of academia. Um, I really like to have an anarchist classroom. Um, you know, uh, in this sense, what I mean is, you know, uh, people who aren't comfortable with the term anarchist remember that anarchy is not chaos. It's just the opposite of hierarchy, right? The opposite of anarchy is hierarchy. Um, and so I try um, to uh, have my room, my class, my students, and even my majors, in the, in the broader sense, um, realize the own power they have to impact the situation not just by saying hey does anybody have any comments right but like no what do you want to do you know what do you want me to teach um, you know what kind of classes should I invent um, and also in in a more momentary sense like hey is this working right now for you guys today right um, obviously I am positioned as in a position of power, right? I mean, I'm, I can't deny that, right? And, and for many students, and, and you all know this too, you know, they want an authority. They want someone to tell them, here's what we're gonna do. Um, they don't want to sit around and determine, you know, they're, they're, I've even dis had this discussion, they're like, you're the expert, you, you know, don't tell me, I don't know what I'm talking about, you tell us what to do, right? Yeah, they're comfortable with that, and our society is based on that kind of hierarchy, so. Um, I try instead to have a benevolent dictatorship, right? Because it is sort of, you know, the classroom situation is very um, dualistic where one person has all the power and the students have none of the power. Try to turn that on its head. And so this is uh, Tito, if you recognize him. He was the, he was the um, benevolent dictator of uh, socialist Yugoslavia, and I've always liked him a lot. One of the reasons, though, that I like him is that is this quote that he has, I'm the leader of one country with two alphabets, three languages, four religions, five nationalities, six republics surrounded by seven neighbors in a country which with eight ethnic minorities. And so um, he was in, I mean, he had his drawbacks, don't get me wrong, but like he was someone who had to respond to a great diversity of problems, a great diversity of people, and he did a pretty decent job of it, um, um, you know, minus some, some a, a few things. And of course, when he left, everything kind of fell apart too. So anyway, he's uh, uh, my idea in the classroom. <laughs> All right, a little bit about the, the history of my idea. Um, this actually started the night before school started because I had, you know, I knew basically what I was going to do for my class. And a lot of it was going to be the material from the first class. Um, and I had, uh, had spent, you know, the summer being trained on how to do it and learning new topics and new ideas um, and, and, you know, learning particulars about the habit of mind. But I still was just not looking forward to it at all. I was just like, oh my God, this is going to suck. Um, how am I going to make this more fun? Um, I'd actually spent um, the previous 18 months um, researching how to make this class better. And, and because I'm a social scientist, that just means talking to people, right? So um, I'm also a coach on the track team, and on the track team, you know, there's like 60 students there who I have no real power over, or, you know, um, I feel like I can get their opinions in a, in a real more, in an open sense. So I ask all of them, like, hey, how was your, oops, sorry, how was your first year seminar? Um, and it was just pretty much universally, ugh, right? Um, the few peop the few students I had did, that are track team members who did like it were that they specifically, you know, said, oh, I really, you know, the faculty who taught it, was, she was awesome, right? Like, and that was kind of what made it memorable, right? Um, 
So I've always, I've still tried to um, figure out what they need a little bit more <coughs> than um, what we think they need, right? Um, and, and how to make it better because, you know, they have to do it. It's not a choice at all. So hopefully I could make it a little bit better. Um, I also get really tired of what I call too cool for school. Um, and to me, what this is, this is an Onion uh, article that perfectly represents what too cool, too cool for school looks like. <laughs> Brain dead teen only capable of rolling eyes and texting to be euthanized. And so it's, the, it's that kind of back of the class, not paying attention, maybe paying attention, just, and it, it's, it's like the students who don't have a, are not comfortable being passionate about learning anything, right? And, and it's a pretty common situation for people to be in who are 18, who just come to college. High school is a, an entire, you know, four years of, of being too cool for school. And, but college to me is the time where you actually get to um, feel comfortable being excited about learning, right? Especially because, you know, you're, you're supposed to be learning about something that you actually like, right? Um, and so that kind of mentality is something that I've really tried to break through, particularly with my majors over the years, and it's been really great to see, like, I have one uh, young woman who came in who was just like, exactly like this girl, brain dead, ugh, whatever, uh, the whole time, but she's finally like started to grow up, and I think that's a part of maturity that comes. And, and so this class is the perfect situation to address that, right? I also wanted the course to actually meet their needs. And what I mean by that is, like I just said, not what we think they need, but more, I'm getting emails, sorry. <laughs> but more like, you know, what they need today, you know, not, not uh, what they need this week, right? Not just, you know, okay, you need to have a well-rounded education, right? I mean, I, I certainly cover all that stuff too, particularly when I talk about gen eds. But like, I want it to, because they have to do it, I want it to really help them, right? I want it to actually be a place that helps them. I sort of, uh, I started thinking about the first year seminar course almost as like a homeroom class um, in, in high school. And I think in some ways you, you, you can't deny the similarity there, although, you know, a homeroom class tends to not have any curriculum at all, um, at least when I, what I remember from it. Um, and, and um, but I saw it has to have a curriculum and some sort of, some, you know, you're getting something out of it. They want to get a lot more than that out of it. But at the same time, I wanted it to kind of feel like the homeroom class, right? Where you, you know, in high school and homeroom, you are in there with people who you may not see in the rest of your day, you know, who have radically different interests than you. And so um, that's kind of the idea. Um, so I decided that I kind of myself needed to enforce a radical change and um, on the way I did things because honestly I thought that that would work better if I just did something way different and it wouldn't be as boring, right? Um, that, that, and especially because the course was focused on big ideas and really the whole idea of the course is focused on big ideas. Um, the idea of making a big change in the course myself seemed to like the right thing to do, right? So. I, I was looking at my um, syllabus from the previous time I taught it, and I was trying to like order everything and you know add some new stuff in, and I was just like, ah, oh, this is just going the same direction. And so I just like, you know, I, I deleted all of the text off the whole syllabus and started over. And then I was like, well, wait, why don't I just keep it this way, right? Like, let's just leave it open. So just to kind of illustrate, um, I, post, I have some pictures of syllabi of mine from other courses, so you'll kind of see this is how I tend to do it in my class, right? Every single day is scheduled. Um, there's, there's very little room um, for change. Um, you know, so when we have a snow day or something, like it throws things off pretty significantly. I end up cutting out stuff. It's whatever. Um, and, and this is just sort of how I do it to kind of keep myself sane. Um, and I, you know, that's how I've done it since I was kind of thrown into the classroom the, from the very beginning. Um, you can see here, this is actually, I tend to color code like by, you know, by section. And this isn't the whole syllabus, right? This is just a schedule, but. Um, and then you can see here, this was my, um, my um, syllabus from the first time I taught the course. And I color coded it to where like, the green things were the sort of general intro to college lectures or discussions or whatever. And then the purple things were like the particular to um, paradise and utopia and the idea of the class. And then the red stuff was assignments. 
Um, and so I had already deleted all that off the um, syllabus to sort of figure out how to rearrange it. And then I just decided, well, we're just going to figure it out as we go. So now this is what the actual one I use right now is. And you can see there is some structure to it, um, but there's a hell of a lot of open space. Um, and so I like to say it's, it's all TBD, right? Um, if you do see, you know, the structure that's built into it are assignments in particular, because I don't want them to just be willy-nilly and try to turn it all in at the end of the semester. Um, you can't see the, the second half of it, but you know, the stuff about creating the poster, um, uh, the, the habits of mind assignments, those I wanted to go ahead and hard schedule because, um, again, I wanted there to, have to be a little bit of a progressive, you know, to add to the content throughout, but the rest of it is pretty wide open, right? So, um, one of the first things I wanted to do to make it more in, um, engaging is just to figure out if they actually cared about the topic at all, right? The idea of them choosing a particular topic is a great idea. Um, however, I also have been there when they choose those classes, and I know that you know, half the time they're just picking it because it fits in their schedule or they know someone else in there or whatever, right? So to me, if they weren't at all interested in the topic of inequality, that was going to change a little bit of how I would, have do, how I would do things, right? Um, so the first thing I did was I gave them this little survey. Please rate your interest in the topic or section inequality by circling one. I, a, I'm interested and chose the topic on purpose. B, someone interested sounded good enough. Or C, I chose it for a different reason, right? Or I didn't know the topic. I kind of thought I would get a lot of C's, but I really didn't. I ended up getting like 23 that were A or B who had at least some moderate interest in what was going on. So, you know, that was uh, good. <laughs> I was glad because I was like, it's kind of good because, you know, that's what I'm going to be talking about, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, the second thing I wanted to do was show them, um, and this is like the very beginning of the class, show them all the stuff that we had to do in class, right? I mean, and these are from my previous um, my, pr my previous section, um, this was actually uh, the must-dos beyond the habits of mind and the, and the actual assignments. This is more about the lectures and um, the lectures and discussions that we'll have in class. So I have these intro to college lectures, which by the way, um, anybody who's interested in these, I will be happy to give them to you. They're just things I've written about. They compare PSU to other schools. They talk about you know, the whole, like, faculty, how they get here, faculty rank system. I talk about, I do a lecture about the NCAA. It's just stuff like that. Um, value of gen ed, um, and on and on. And then I have these purple lectures that are specific to um, the topic of inequality, uneven development. Um, you know, these have, you know, YouTube videos built into them, <coughs> and, you know, discussion questions and things like that. But the idea was is that these were going to be the main things that I tried, that I built the voting on, and then the second things are the sort of supplementary parts, right? Um, which to me were the, the, in some ways, the funner stuff, but at the same time, the things that were kind of challenging the rigor of every day. And by the way, I have no problem at all lecturing every single day of the, of the class. Um, my grandfather is uh, faculty at the school I got my undergrad degree at, and he is two years from being the longest serving professor in the history of Texas. He's been faculty since 1963. And he is a lecturer in a real European <coughs> sense where he literally says, I don't want you to raise your hand and ask any questions, right? And he's pretty damn good at it. I took his class, I got a B. But, um, <laughs> but I don't have a problem lecturing, and, um, but at the same time, I don't want it to just be lecture, right? Um, in the lectures, I tend to try to make them funny and have good pictures and so that they're entertaining. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, it's not a problem for me to do that. Um, and even ideologically, I'm comfortable with it. Uh, I feel like it's important for people to be able to sit and listen to something for two hours, right? Or an hour and a half. Like, you know, I get that people don't like it, but anyway. Uh, actually, one of my students who's in this class is from Spain. And um, for her, the fact that, that she would have any contact with me was like, wow, you know, in Europe, you, you know, you're never even going to get their email address hardly, much less sit down and talk about how things are going, right? Um, so there is sort of a balance in that. Now, um, the, the third thing I wanted to do was sort of brainstorm the other stuff we can do in class. And this is actually just my list of things that we could do. 
Some of them are a little bit silly. Uh, <laughs> it's actually um, built into the uh, reality that my daughter started her first day of kindergarten the same day I wrote this. And so I was like, yeah, we'll make it like kindergarten, but not really. But that's why it's like music time. Uh, what, but what music time is, is not just sit around and listen to music. It's sort of like, you know, I have them bring in um, songs where that they feel like are relevant to either, you know, uh, the, the idea of inequality or like um, that are about the thing, you know, that can be related to habits of mind and we just sort of listen to music and discuss it, right? Um, but you can see here we also, I have a bunch of films, um, other activities, go on a walk. Notice that some of these are, re, you know, these are the books for the class, read Ecotopia, read Looking Backward, sit outside, campus picture quest. We haven't actually done that yet, but the idea here was that we would go um, take photos of stuff that's going on on campus and relate it again to the topics of the class. Work in the library. Um, this topic um, I'm about to have to do, organize your lives and schedule, because um, I feel like that there's a lot of uh, that, and, and you know, you can certainly see how that plugs right into habits of mind, is that you know, there's a little bit of self-discipline that is missing, particularly from students who are brand new, right? Um, and so there's, there's things on here that I feel like, you know, are not necessarily what you, what they would expect from a college class, right? And then I even have this on here, work on homework, study for other classes. Um, in all honesty, I feel like four hours for the credit for this is too much. Um, I, I had uh, difficulty the first time when it was three hours, um, you know, taking up the whole class periods. And so in some ways I'm like, I want you to work and I want you to learn, but if it's going to be more valuable for you, um, like for example, next week because it's all the midterms, right? Um, if everyone in this class has a midterm coming up today, I would rather that you sit here quietly and study for your next test than sit here and write notes on something that I could talk about on any day of the year and, um, you know, that is not going to benefit you, right? So that's a little, um, that's to me was kind of a radical idea because we tend to think of it's my time we do this stuff for this class but at the same time to serve them to serve the students I felt like that was a good um, a good possibility now we haven't actually done that yet either but um, I'm gonna make it I'm gonna make it happen it'll probably be next week so um, the fourth thing I wanted to do is just to come up with a way to do this right um, I can't just say hey raise your hand if you want to tell us what you want to do today, right? I have to have a little bit more structure than that. So basically, I just come up with these votes. And the, the dictatorship part of this is that I decide what's on the ballot, right? So it's kind of like a Russian election, right? Like, oh yeah, sure, you can vote for Putin or not. No, but uh, it's, it's a little bit better than that. But at the same time, like, um, it, the idea is to be responsive. Now, I have told them over and over again like, if you have an idea that you want us to learn about, even if it's just something that you just came up with right now, tell me, and I'm not going to necessarily just jump on it, um, but at the same time, I'll put it on the vote, right? Like, I'm happy to, to give you all sorts of opportunities to kind of influence where this class is going, right? So, so I'm going to show you all a couple of the votes that we've had um, uh, that are kind of representative of an average day, um, some days that were uh, more fun than others, and some other stuff that I've done that was sort of a way to fix some problems in the class, which was actually last class, and I'm going to do that one. For some reason, the red part is, stays up there. So this is basically what the vote looks like. Um, I, I put this on here afterwards because that's the one they chose, right? So there are four to five choices each time. They just have a little piece of green paper. Um, they, they get two pieces of paper, one that's sort of like their attendance, right, so it has their name on it. When they do the green piece of paper that's the vote, I tell them to not put their name on it because I don't, you know, I mean, they don't really care if I know what they voted for, but at the same time, I want them to feel like it's, it's just anonymous. Every time, though, I have this question, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, and I put that in there from the very beginning because I want to know if the vote itself is even worth it, right? And I've been pretty pleased to see that generally, you know, there's like 27 in there, so that means on any day there's like 20 that actually show up. Um, and then um, usually there'll be like three that are at D, 
right? And it's also because I kind of know who they are, because <laughs> I do go collect them. Uh, it's not necessarily the same students either, right? Um, so, um, that being said, the rest of it is really just me, you know, I count everything and um, I'll give them generally a very quick, like, okay, this lecture is about this, it, it, you know, sometimes they'll say, which one's the shortest, you know, and I'll be like, <laughs> pretty much every time I say, well, they're all about the same length or they're all about an hour and then I just go the whole class time anyway because I like to talk. <laughs> but sometimes I'll say, you know, this one has a video, you know, this, you know, but I give them a little bit of information, but I really try to not sway what they're going to vote. I really want it to, to kind of be responsive. Um, uh, this is again a very generic one. Um, most of the time, it's about you know forty percent for one of the letter choices, twenty percent for another choice, and then just sort of split up between the rest. Um, uh, a few <coughs> of the votes have been super one-sided, um, but you'll see whenever you show, I show you what the vote, the choices were. Um, only one time ever there was an there was a tie, um, and I just chose because I wanted to do the one right. I get a vote, um, and also that one I chose because we were having a discussion right before class. It was super relevant to that particular lecture. Um, it, was, it was actually this um, higher education and society because I've talked a lot about um, about free college, right? Because that's sort of an inequality issue and it's a utopian idea. And I was super glad to see that PSU did that um, Northwoods connection thing. Have you seen that? Where it's like free tuition to, or in-state tuition to New Hampshire and Maine. It's a great step in the right direction. So I was glad because I could integrate that in a class. And in a lot of ways with that super rigid schedule, <clears throat> I often don't even leave myself 10 minutes to talk about something that I, is just happening, right? Um, so this has been a, that's been a benefit of this too. All right, here's another one. Um, this is uh, independently work on our reading assignment in class. Um, so I did this one because um, we, I had noticed on my schedule that I had kind of done, I had kind of uh, piled up a couple of assignments um, on top of each other. And for this class, I, in all of mine, I don't like to have a whole bunch of assignments. And I, I don't even like to call it homework because to me, homework means something that you do every day and I just, that's not what I want out of mine. Um, uh, and so I, I said, you know, are y'all feeling, you know, is there a lot to do for you uh, for this class right now? And I was like, okay, cool. So I just put that on there um, and they chose that. Now this one, by the way, wasn't just like a universal, everyone chose this. It was kind of split all over the place. So, but they did want to do it. And so what this allowed us to do is that I knew they were finished with the assignment, right? And then we could actually, um, hack, we could talk through it at the time. You know, they talked to each other about it. It, and I was comfortable with that, um, and it, it helped them actually get it done. Um, now, uh, here's another one. This was probably, to me, one, uh, the second best day um, so far. Um, I had this idea of, uh, this is, you know, what, September 10th, so they've been here for a couple weeks, and I wanted to, I, I really love the class because of the demographic similarity, right? Every student in there is 18. Almost all of them are from New England and one from Spain. <laughs> and, um, you know, they all live on campus, right? There's no, like, you know, went to um, the Plymouth schools that lives at home. So I tried to explain to them, like, look, y'all are in this situation that you're never going to be in again, where, like, everyone in your, in your classes, in this class, is, is, like, very similar to you demographically, right? So I, I try to get them to sort of establish some solidarity um, amongst themselves to know, look, they're going through the same things I'm going through, right? Maybe a little different here and there, but, um, and so I kind of wanted them to find that amongst themselves. And so that's why I came up with this sit in a circle and everyone, because I didn't want it to be volunteer as forced, right? <laughs> everyone discusses how college is going. So here's actually the, the questions that I had them answer. Um, I, we sat in a circle, I chose the person whose birthday was nearest to start, and then it was like, choose one of these, you know, just random ones, what's been easiest for you, what's not like you thought it was, something incredible, something whatever, um, tell us your name and where you're from, because I'm horrible at remembering names, but I remember where everybody's from, um, and that's why I'm a geographer. <laughs> uh, and uh, then answer the group. So, and it really worked pretty well because it was, you know, there was a lot of, oh yeah, you know, like, 
oh, I see, you know, who's tired of the dining hall? Oh my God, all right, I'm so over it. Or like, you know, well, I can't get anything done because um, the dorms are just like so busy and I'm used to having privacy and, you know, so I was like, oh, well, you know, if you need some privacy, you should go here, here, and here on campus. There's places that nobody is, right? And so it sort of self-perpetuated the discussion pretty well. Um, I like that. And I also found that in this day, a couple of the students really broke out of their shells and were comfortable being the talker, right? You know, the beginning of this class, you know, if I'm, I'm teaching upper level class, there's, there's the talkers, the ones who are gonna answer questions and stuff, they jump out automatically, they're used to being in class and half the time I already know them anyway. Um, but in this, with everybody being brand new, nobody steps up and is like gonna be the one that answers every question and you know, is the center of attention. But we kinda need those people to some extent. And so this class is actually where the, the few students who are doing that um, kind of took on their role. Um, so that worked out pretty well. So do you basically have all these kind of in your back pocket mm -hmm. so that when they vote, yep. you're like, yep. here we this go. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do, yeah. yeah. And that's on the uh, challenges at the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one habit of mind, uh, one problem that we had um, this week is that I went back and looked at their assignments and a bunch of them haven't turned them in, right? A significant, like more than most classes have. And it, my first thought was like, okay, I'm gonna write down every student's name and which ones they haven't turned in. And I'm like, hell no, that's not my, my responsibility, that's theirs. So I felt like one of the issues is, is that the kind of openness and freedom, because they're so used to so much structure, it, I think it kind of overwhelmed them and they put off stuff and they didn't do it. Um, and so I decided that we were gonna talk a lot about self-regulated learning because that's exactly the situation that we're in. Uh, when they turned in their first Habits of Mind essays, they were really great. I was, I was, I thought they were just going to be rambling BS because um, that was just what I expected because the topics are abstract. And but they actually they thought a lot about man, I'm pretty good at this, but I'm not good at this. So I talked about this desire to learn, too cool for school, self meditate, self monitored, setting personal goals, responsibility, things like that. But then I was like, how am I going to make this part more, democr more democratic? And so what I decided to do was I gave them this piece where I listed the assignments that were due and then I told them to tell me when they were gonna get them finished. Because in a lot of ways, it doesn't matter to me when they finish them. Um, and you know, I could technically grade them all at the end of class um, as long as they did them in order, um, with, especially with the Habits of Mind ones. But I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Um, and so this actually worked pretty well. Um, they all, and they didn't all choose the latest date possible. I said, look, you know your schedule, you know how much work you have to do, you figure it out for yourself and set your own deadline, and then I will grade them when you give me that deadline, and if you don't, then you know, I actually will give you a zero on it, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna not, you know, there, are, there is some responsibility. Um, okay, yeah, so we'll see how that goes. I mean, 30 total points so far out of 100, and, and some of them have done none of them. And I'm like, okay, I, let's kind of, let's get back into the game here. Right? I want you to enjoy yourself. So was this kind of like an activity that went with the... This is just what I did before the, gotcha. the vote, right? Um, and then the vote part, I, I actually considered just saying, hey, let's work on this in class, but when I re looked through the grades, I saw there was, you know, uh, of the, you know, 27 that are in there, there was seven or eight of them who had done everything mm -hmm. and had done awesome on it. And I'm like, you know, I'm not going to put them through a boring sit there and work on something else day, you know, mm -hmm. when, and they honestly, the ones who have done it all are actually interested even mm -hmm. in like the, why you have to take gen ed's lecture, right? <laughs> so I want to give them, you know, what they want to, to, to hear, right? So. Um, now, uh, this was uh, by far the best day, um, was walking the woods. Um, and, and again, this was based a little bit on the fact that they seemed kind of stressed out. It was a gorgeous day, it was just like today. Uh, when was this? It was like two weeks ago. Um, and this worked really well because the book we were reading, Ecotopia, is just as the title, it's about a, it's a utopian fiction about a world that's sort of this sustainability. It's written in 1975. And so um, I, uh, I was talking to Brian Eisenhower, who's my buddy, and he, he actually taught this course for me whenever I was on medical leave. Um, he took the syllabus I created and the activities I created and then did it for me. 
So it's kind of a fascinating thing to have someone have uh, as such a good resource in that way. And so I said, dude, I just want to take him on a walk in the woods, but I feel like it has to have some purpose. He was like, you're reading Incotopia. It's like the perfect, you know, connection. Uh, yeah, and in that, that book, they walk, talk a lot about hiking and walking. So, so what the, the, the more broad purpose was is I was like, I want to show you all the quickest way to get to Hannaford's. Mm. You know, so we walked along the Baker River, you know, and we turned around and came back, and I got to ramble on about trees and flowers and the rivers and just random stuff that I like to talk about, right? And I also in that, I, did, I really tried to, like, walk with each student for a little while, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. to kind of connect with all of them. Um, because I tend to walk really fast, and um, it, I had to discipline myself in that. Just, just because I feel like walking in the woods, this, you know, is a, it's a totally different. It's a less hierarchical environment, right? It's very open. And so we talked about sports, and we talked about high school, and you know, everything. Um, okay, so that worked out well. Um, now, um, the summary here: the benefits of this. Um, I really feel like it has been more enjoyable and memorable which for the students, which is really what I wanted them to get out of it. I feel like, you know, they're going to learn if they learn, if they try. If they don't, you know, maybe they won't. Um, but this, I feel like if they enjoy themselves, um, that it will be memorable. Um, and that, Did you do it most days? Yeah, it's yeah, most, most days. days. It's, yeah. I would say, you know, it's a two days a week class. Um, I think maybe four total days so far I've not done it mm -hmm. because basically like we had to have a whole day of discussion about the book you know that had to be kind of hard scheduled um, we had uh, well one day I had, I, I had to cancel um, and so yeah most days mm -hmm. right probably 80 80 percent at least um, now uh, I can tell to me that it's been enjoyable because first of all, I asked one, I asked them to tell me what their favorite class was, and a couple of them said, and I didn't feel like they were just kissing my ass. <laughs> Maybe they were, but you never know. Um, and then they also asked me about some of my other classes, so I felt like that that was good. Um, and then one of them asked me if I was teaching this again in the spring because she wanted to tell her roommate to take mm -hmm. it, and I was like, well, no, but you know, tell her to come in the fall. <laughs> and why the hell had she taken it already? <laughs> you know, what's what's up with that? Um, it's also been more responsive to their needs, which is what I wanted. Um, they, they are getting more <coughs> comfortable with saying, like, here's what we need, right? Um, it's also been more responsive to my needs, you know, because on some days, I don't feel like standing up there and talking. I want to go on a walk in the woods. I want to just make it more social, get to know them better. Um, and, um, you know, it's, there's no reason for me to make it serve my, my own needs as well. No reason not to. And then finally, um, well, oh, it's certainly more group solidarity. I did want that. Um, I want them to get to know each other. You know, I told them, look, you probably are going to graduate with a lot of these people, and you may not see them again, but at least you could be like, oh, yeah, I was in that class with that guy where we voted, right? Yeah. Um, and then finally, I, I, I think that just doing it itself is an example of utopian thinking. Um, and, you know, challenging the everyday stuff so that they can see that it can be challenged and you know this isn't like earth-shattering change right it's not that big of a deal but um, I wanted to experiment with it so they could see that you can experiment with things even when it's your job right mm -hmm. um, now a few problems uh, of course it requires more prep right like I kind of have to have whatever my choices are on the ballot in my back pocket ready to go I told them like look whenever we do this you're gonna have to give me five minutes to kind of mm -hmm you know, clear my mind and refocus on the topic. But I tend to, what I tend to do is, I'll read through the whole lectures, all four or five of them before class anyway. Um, and so I can just jump right in it. But you know, I have to like bring all the movies. They have to be on top of bringing all of their material every day. So like bring all your books, bring a computer, right? Um, you can't just bring a pen because I might, you know, we might choose to do something where you need a lot more mm -hmm. than that. Um, it's not as participatory as I'd hoped, right? You know, I want them to be like, I told them, like, you can outnumber me. You can decide. You can, you can all stand up and be like, no, dude, we're not doing this, right? Because that's just the practicality of a group versus a single person, right? <laughs> Teach them to be revolutionaries, right? Um, but, you know, uh, they're getting there. They're getting there. Um, maybe too much freedom in the sense that they aren't doing the work, um, or some of them aren't. Um, you know, that could be the case in any class, but uh, I don't know if that's why they weren't doing it. I almost was going to get them to tell me why they hadn't done the work, you know, as if it was just 
to be honest, but I kind of don't think they'd be honest, you know? <laughs> like, oh, just tell me, like, I just didn't feel like it. I didn't think that you were gonna care or, you know, you were gonna grade it, right? Mm -hmm. So, anyway. Um, it's also a little bit less ordered. I, I tend to like to have, you know, like, well, we talked about this last week, mm -hmm. and now let's talk, you know, and it, it's gotten a little jumpy, but, you know, it's okay. Uh, one example of that is that, um, uh, you know, uh, Brian and I, Brian's teaching his class at the same time as mine, like, right nearby, um, his first year, or his Wicked Problem class, and one of the days I put our cannabis tourism lecture on there, which was <laughs> overwhelmingly chose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it actually surprised me a little bit because it's kind of not that related, but you know, they like to talk about weed, so <laughs> that's fun. But the point is, is that if I had planned that ahead of time, I would have told Brian, dude, bring your class and let's just do it all together because we tend to do that lecture together anyway because it's, we're co-authors on it, right? So a little bit of a missed opportunity there. Um, and in general, I think, you know, if I planned, uh, I could find more unique opportunities, but eh, it's just, that's the way it went. So that's all, that's what I got. Tell me what you think. Tell me how to improve it. You know, ask questions. I'm actually going to shut this, even though I think the discussion is going to be super amazing, but I want to participate yeah. and it's awkward otherwise. So yeah. Thank you, Adam. You bet, you bet. Um, and thanks, thanks to all our viewers.